A lovelier bride I've never seen. You, you're wonderful. And you'll always be happy? Always? Uh, do you mind? Not at all, Oba. Oh. Well, my dear, this is the only reason that I ever come to wedding. A charming custom, isn't it? Kissing the bride. I've heard it so described, but never by the bride. Uh, excuse me, uh, Oba, but uh, this gentleman is next. Oh, I beg oh, your pardon. Hey. My dear Gwen. Hello, Drummond. Hello. Say, I was just wondering, what became of Algie? Who? Algie, the bridegroom, you know, her husband. Oh, oh, you mean that lonely little chap with a face like a rabbit? Uh, uh, there he is. Oh, I see. Ah, the bridegroom. Hearty congratulations, my dear fellow. Thanks, Hugh. They say I'll be very happy. Uh, Algie, have you kissed her yet? Well, not since the ceremony. Go to her, and if she raises the slightest objection, put your foot down. There must be no discrimination against the husband. Thanks, Hugh. That's a very interesting way of looking at it. Good. <laughs> Darling! <laughs> Darling, can I see you for a minute? Excuse me, just a minute, darling. Remember, just one minute. Just one minute, my pet. Oh, you. You're not going to leave me alone tonight, of all nights. But this is your wedding night, Algie. Tonight of all nights, you should be left alone. Yeah, a matter of custom, I suppose. I'm afraid so. Well, anyway, it was awfully nice of you to come all the way back from Africa just to attend my wedding. Well, Algie, this is the end. The end, not only of your adventuring, but mine, too. The old team of Drummond and Algy miles together. Never again to fare forth into the night, armed with toothbrush and gun. I suppose some of the unhappiest moments of my life were spent with you, old boy. <laughs> well, Algy, it was fun. Then, but now, oh, I'm fed up. I've had all the thrills I ever wanted. War, adventure, big game hunting. And all I want now is peace and quiet. To stretch out on a grassy slope, face to the sun, the ripple of a babbling brook making soft music to drowse their algae through the years with just a pipe, a dog, and a book. Any particular book? Never you mind. You get back to Gwen and never leave her again. Never algae for any reason. I'll speak to her about it. All right. See you before you go. My holy shinky dog. If it isn't Drummond, Bulldog Drummond. Nielsen, my dear fellow, I'm delighted. How goes Scotland Yard? Why aren't you still in Africa? Algy's wedding. You wouldn't have him miss that, would you? All the week, I've had a dull, sickly feeling that something horrible was going to happen to me. And here you are. As Algy would say, I don't follow you, Inspector. The moment you come to London, trouble starts, and you know it. The last time you arrived, some silly ass tried to blow up the house of the Parliament. <laughs> dreadful, Inspector, dreadful. Oh, come on. You stop calling me Inspector. I'm sorry, Colonel Alfred, Reginald Nielsen, DSO, MC, Assistant Commissioner, Scotland Yard. Drummond, you're a splendid fellow in many ways, no doubt. But for the sake of peace and quiet, why can't you go back to Africa tonight? Inspector, I'm saying goodbye to all excitement. Tomorrow morning early, I'm leaving London for Sussex. Good. Yes, I'm going to devote the rest of my life to raising hollyhocks. Huh? Hollyhocks. Tall, ugly little flowers. No perfume. Very bad smell, in fact. May I ask why you're going down to Sussex to raise these stinking little flowers? Oh, I'm fed up. Inspector, ever since the war, I've... Ah! Oh. Congratulations! Thank you! Sorry I couldn't be at the ceremony, Aldrey, but I've arrived in time to wish you both happiness. Thank you, Colonel. Bless you. Goodbye, my dear, and a life filled with happiness. Thank you, Hugh. And when we get back, we want you to be the first to visit it. Thank you. Algie, old friend, our paths may cross again one day, but until they do, goodbye and good luck. Goodbye, Hugh. Don't forget to telephone us, even if it's just a postcard. I will, I promise. Goodbye to you, Inspector. I shall now vanish into the fog, possibly never to be seen again. <laughs> that should cheer you up. But you're not going to walk in this fog. We live in the same building. Let me give you a lift. 
We'll drop you off. No, thanks. No, the fog seems to offer something I want. Peace and quiet. Goodbye, Gwen. Bye-bye. Algie. Bye. Colonel. Yes. I still have a feeling I shan't get a wink of sleep tonight. That's strange. I have something of the same feeling about myself. Algy! Look out where you're going, can't you? Sorry, old man. Pardon? My fault, I'm afraid. Forgive me. Was that you just spoke to? Nobody. Oh, yes, you did. I heard you. Was it a man or a woman? Uh, neither. As a matter of fact, it was some kind of a pole, a telegraph pole. You spoke to a telegraph pole? Well, just a little. All I said was, please forgive me. You see, I bumped into it quite accidentally. I don't believe you. You're lying to me. Why does everybody lie to me? Hey, wait a minute, please. Pardon me, Governor. The light. Thanks. Soupy, ain't it? I'll give you my word, Governor. I've been lost in this here blinking fog for three blooming days and three blasted nights. How about you, Governor? Lost in the fog, too? To tell you the truth, my friend, I'm afraid I am. Well, what are we going to do about it? Ah, that's the difficulty. Hold on, I've got it. Look, you, you attach yourself firmly to this post and hold tight, you understand. Meanwhile, I'll go to this house and ask permission to phone. Hello there. Anyone at home? Hello. May I use your telephone?
Hey, officer. Officer, I found it for you. Found what, sir? The body. Come quickly. Here, here. Who put all this about, eh? doing that. There's no one at home. Yes, sir. Uh, may we come in? If you wish, sir. Just a moment, please. Who do you wish to see? Where were you two minutes ago? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you summon the police? For what, sir? Are you sure you got the right house, sir? Oh, positive. Now, now, sir. What is it you want? Now, one moment, sir. This is all very highly irregular. Yes, and that body, officer, is very highly irregular. The body? What sort of body? You were saying, sir? I was saying that I was in here two minutes, three minutes ago. Saying, was this gentleman in this house two minutes, three minutes ago? No, Your Highness. Proceed, sir. Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes ago, sir. In that room, on a divan, lay a body. The body of a man who had died in great agony. But this is shocking. Too shocking for me to ignore, sir. I'm afraid I shall have to insist on, on your looking again. I beg your pardon. Permit me. I am Prince Ahmed of Shavi. Uh, Drummond, sir. Hugh Drummond. Mr. Drummond, my daughter, Mrs. Southern. How do you do? At least you were not in the room before, or I would most certainly have noticed it. Uh, where's the monkey? Here now. Never mind the monkey. Where's that body you said you saw? Uh, officer. Is this your corpse? Seems to me he's very much alive. You're mistaken, sir. Yes, you're, you're, you're right. Uh, pardon me, but uh, how, how, how long have you been here? Mm, about two hours. Two hours? Yes, I fell asleep right after dinner. Aren't you the man they call Bulldog, Drummond? Bulldog? <laughs> At this moment, Mrs. Southern, not nearly as much Bulldog as Pomeranian. And now, are you quite satisfied that we are harboring no bodies, violently dead or otherwise? Oh, quite. My only concern now is for my own sanity. <clears throat> All right, officer, I'll go quietly. Sorry to trouble you, sir. And a thousand apologies, Your Highness, for this stupid intrusion. Good night. If this fellow bothers you again tonight, let me know. Here, yeah. what have you been up to this evening? I've been to a wedding reception, officer. Oh. Well, you better go home and sleep it off. Stop bothering people. All right, officer. Good night. Good night.
Captain Drummond, if you place the slightest value on your life, I advise you to forget this whole incident. That's right. Kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, just sitting around like this, together. And all those people down at the station waiting to throw rice at us. And us so cozy here. Oh, Algie, I'm the happiest woman in the world. Oh, no, darling, I am. <clears throat> what, dear? Nothing. I just cleared my throat. Oh. <clears throat> like that. I thought you said something. No, just cleared my throat. Do you think it'd be all right if I took off my coat? Oh, you could take off your coat, I guess. Yes, I guess I can. Took it off. Oh, just one little wee little moment, darling. Oh, that's all right, darling. No hurry, you know. Hello, sweetheart. Algie, something terrible has happened. I want you to come over at once. But, Hugh, I can't leave here now. I really can't. Well, not yet, anyway. But, my dear fellow, this is the chance of a lifetime. Just think of it, Algie. My very life has been threatened. And by as sinister a character as you. Huh? But, Hugh, what I mean to say is... Well, to put it one way, uh, here I am, and uh, here she is. Sort of a critical moment. Oh, Algy. Mousy, mousy. Well, I got to be getting along. Where are you going? There's no use missing words. I've got to see Drummond on business. Oh, Algy, please don't go. I'll be back, of course, but right now I gotta be getting along. Well, au revoir. That's the French goodbye, remember? Au revoir. Suddenly I looked behind me, and there stood Prince Acme, who said if you place the slightest value on your life, Captain Drummond, you will forget the entire incident. Oh, it was splendid! Splendid, Algy! I knew it. I knew it in my bones. The moment I saw you today, I said to myself, no sleep for me tonight. But, my dear fellow, I tell you, this is serious. The body was there. I saw it. Touched it. We've got to do something. How about all of us just going on home? Ah, oh, home. You're a nice enough fellow, Drummond. Well, oh, you have your faults. But why don't you come down, down to those... those... What were those stinking little flowers you were going to raise? Hollyhocks. Hollyhocks. Well, why don't you get down to your hollyhocks tonight and let Algie and me get back to bed? What do you mean, back to bed? So you don't believe me? You won't do a thing? Certainly not. In the first place, your Prince Ahmed is a distinguished visitor to England, not a criminal. In the second, you're a harebrained young ass who'll probably find an Egyptian mummy in your bed or a shark in your bath. Thirdly, I'm sleepy. But mummy or no mummy, leave me alone and let me sleep. You believe me, don't you, Algy? I believe you, Hugh, but he's got the right idea. Oh, now, just see this picture, Algy, if you can. Now, now, try it. A dark and gloomy house in the fog. A sinister prince out of a very sinister orient. And a body that disappears. 
Why, Algy, in the whole picture, there's only one flaw. Ah, we need a girl, Algy, very beautiful and very seductive. A girl to make a man's heart tremble. A girl in distress. But first of all, she must be beautiful. And by Christopher, look, Algy, here she is. Oh, please come in. We were just discussing you. Oh. I wouldn't do that if I were you. A girl knocked at my door one night last June. It was nearly September before I could get her out. She's not drugged. Algy, it's her nerve. Something serious has happened. Parker, Brandy, quick. Yes, sir. There must be a lot of other doors in London to knock on. Why does she have to pick on yours? Ah, that's part of the mystery. Who is she? Where does she come from? And why has she flown straight as an arrow to my door? Now, don't be alarmed. Yes, you're quite right. We've met before. I'm the fellow that chats with telegraph poles. Where's Colonel Nielsen? He lives in the flat above. They told me upstairs I'd find him down here, and I must find him. Well, matter of fact, he just left. But if you'll tell us, perhaps we can help you. Are you a detective? Well, an amateur detective. My most amusing hobby. I've been looking for my uncle. He, he's disappeared. Oh, I don't know what you can do. Oh, try us. If it looks too much, I'll get Nielsen out of bed again. Well, we just reached London this morning. My uncle and aunt and I from the East Indies aboard the Bombay Girl. That's a cargo ship. Yes. Well, we came across from quarantine and went straight to a hotel near the dock. Then my uncle left us about 11 o'clock this morning to make some sort of report to the owner of the ship. And that's the last we've seen of him. And the owner, did he get the report? Prince Ahmed? Prince? Why, I don't know. My algae! Uh, what about Prince Ahmed? Well, that's the strange part of it. He's the owner of the Bombay girl. And this evening when I went to his house, they told me my uncle had never arrived. Oh, they acted so peculiarly. That's what worries me so. Wait. Mayfair, 6257. Hello. Hello. Can you come down here for a moment? Oh, my aunt. My sainted aunt. No, 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 Drummond, listen. I'm no longer a young man. I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. And will you please, in the name of mercy, leave me alone? <coughs> Algie, that settles it. You and I are now in complete charge. Now, tell me all you know about Prince Ahmed. Well, oh, but first, your name. My name is Field. Lola Field. Mine's Drummond. Hugh Drummond. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> the alert panther man on your right is Algy. Uh, Algy. Oh, someone say something? Now, Miss Field. Well, Prince Ahmed has been Uncle Paul's employer in the East for the past 15 years. But recently, my uncle received orders to sell everything the prince owned. House, land, everything. Put every shilling into something. I don't know what that something was because Uncle Paul wouldn't tell me. Then to load it onto the Bombay girl and bring it here to London. And you? the faintest idea of what the cargo is? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it was furs. Furs? Yes, valuable furs from northern China and Siberia. Yes, go on. Well, there's only one explanation, and that really isn't a very good one, because I don't know what it means. Uh, what was this, this explanation, Miss Field? A radiogram. In code? Yes, how did you know? Oh. Ah, you see, Algy Hyde builds and grows within two minutes. A girl in distress, a lost uncle, and now a radiogram in code. Do you know where it came from? Port Said on the Suez Canal. Port Said? Yes, you see, we stopped there two weeks ago to take a sick deck to shore. Mm. Then when we reached the hotel this morning, my uncle was in such a hurry to get to the Prince that he forgot the radiogram. 
And that Martha, knowing how important it was, asked me to take it to him. So your aunt knows what it said? Yes, Uncle Paul must have told her I know because she was terribly upset too. All right, Algie, we're off on the first hop. Parker. Yes, sir. My hat and coat. Algie, your things. Miss Fields, you're on. Would you mind telling me where we're going? To Miss Fields' hotel to get some very important information from her aunt. The meaning of that radiogram. For yourself. Oh, but that's ridiculous. I saw Uncle Paul register this morning. My aunt, where is she? Show sure, Miss, I don't know. Well, a general all around air of confusion, isn't it? I beg your pardon. Something wrong, sir? I I'm the manager. Mr. Hendricks will tell you. He knows I live here. Uh, you know this lady? No, I'm afraid not, sir. Why, you told me I was speaking with you only this morning. Me, Miss? Yes. No, there must be some mistake, Miss. Not me. Oh, Please. no, no, no. There's no mistake. I Just wait. Would you have any objection to our looking at room number, what is it? 34. 34, sir? Well, that's occupied. But we've got some other rooms. No, no, we just want to look at room 34, if you've no objection. Oh, if you insist, sir, certainly not. Uh, just come with me, please. Thank you. No question about the number? No, no, I'm absolutely positive, room 34. Well, I beg your pardon, sir, but this young lady here would like to see the room for a minute. Oh, what's the idea? It's just for one minute, that's I all, I know, sir. but listen here. Just Stop. a minute, that's but all. But look here. Just a minute. Miss Field, is this your room? No, it's, it's not the same furniture. Not the same wallpaper. Well, everything seems different. Now, you see, sir? I'm afraid the young lady's in the wrong hotel. I'm not in the wrong hotel. I was here this morning and you know it. But, miss, there must be some mistake. No, there's no mistake. Uh, just you know one that... minute, please. How long have you occupied this room? You get out of it. The old blooming lot of you. What kind of an hotel do you call this? A lot of blokes busting in on a man on his wedding night. It's a slight mistake, that's all. You off it. Well, I'm very sorry, sir. Is this your wedding night? It is. And what's more, I can prove it. Say no more. I know just how you feel. Your oh, pardon me, sir, but I think the little lady's a bit confused, sir. Well, scarcely more than I. Thanks for the trouble, anyway. Well, not at all, sir. Good night, Captain Drummond. Drummond? Why do you call me Captain Drummond? You told me that was your name, sir. Oh, no, 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 you're mistaken. I never told you my name. Matter of fact, my name is Fortescue. Mortimer P. Fortescue. Remember that? Yes, Mr. Fortescue. Well, that clears that all up. You do believe me, don't you? I do, but I shouldn't. When you knocked at my door and fainted in my arms, I said to myself, this is serious. But now there's no sense to it. Not even a lark anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I promise you we won't give up. Now, you spoke of a radiogram received by your uncle on board ship. Yes. Have you got it with you? Yes, I have, but I... Oh, I don't think I should... You don't trust me, hmm? Trust you? 
Oh, yes. Well? Well, it, it was just that you... It was just that you've done enough. More than enough. Not half I'd like to. Splendid. Algie, how's the old noodle? On edge? Huh? Excellent. Working like a whip, I see. Here. Have you got a pencil? Yes. I want you to make a copy of this radiogram with all the speed and accuracy possible only to an ex-officer in His Majesty's Signal Corps. With you, I haven't decoded a message since the armistice. Now, now, Algie, this is no time to tell me of your war experiences. Just copy it. Quick. Really, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Don't. Let's save it until we run out of conversation. That won't be for hours. Well, so far, there's no way of telling my wedding night from any other. Never mind, Algie. You're going home now. Home? Do you think you can spare me? No, I'm afraid I can't. You're going home to translate that code. And, Algie, I want you to work on it as you've never worked before, sparing time for neither food, sleep, nor love. That rather narrows down my activities, don't you think? It's wearing off. Did you find anything? Nothing. Did you search her thoroughly? From head to foot. Then we're killed again. I tell you, we're going to find it and destroy it. You're blundering idiot. Why didn't you fetch the girl, too? She was in fair highness. The old woman was all alone. Then where is she? Hello? It's for you, highness. Yes? Hello. Yes, she was here. Yes, we'd hardly finished changing the numbers on the doors. And you was right. Drummond was with her. Where did she go? She drove away in his car. And I saw her take a piece of paper out of her purse and show it to him. It must have been the radiogram. All right, don't worry. And above all, don't talk. So it's... Still Captain Drummond. He has obviously chosen to ignore my most excellent advice. That was very, very unwise of him. You know, at last I've decided what you're like. You're like someone out of a book. I know, Oliver Twist. Will that be all, sir? That's all, Parker. Now, this will do you good. Sugar? No, just lemon. Have a biscuit. No, thank you. Piece of cake. You know, I'm very good at cooking omelets. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> That's better. Now you're smiling. Well, it's rather difficult not to with you. Besides, you seem to have given me courage and hope. A feeling of safety that I didn't believe was possible. Ah, leave it to little Oliver. <laughs> now I can go to work. Where are you going? This time I'm going to make sure of getting Nielsen out of bed. With a pistol? Well, it's not a bad idea, but I don't think it's necessary. No, I have a witness for him this time. You. Now, in the meanwhile, just relax. Try and believe that everything is going to come out all right. Will you? Will you? I'll be back in a minute.
Drummond, you young fool, do you realize you're beginning to haunt me like a nightmare? Well, you know what we're going to find, don't you? What? The girl's gone, of course, kidnapped, some rot like that. You're wrong, Inspector. She's here and very beautiful. You ready? Smile now. Lola! 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 Miss Field! Parker! Lola! She's gone! May I go to bed now? Oh, I tell you, this is serious, Nielsen. She was here, I swear it. Drummond, you found a body. It disappeared. You found a girl. She disappeared. She had a hotel room. It disappeared. Why is it my blasted luck that everything and everybody can disappear except you? Oh, now, wait. As a favor, a personal favor, I want a couple of your men to come with me to Prince Ahmed's house and search it now. I see. Just a born disturber of other people's sleep. Ah, uh, will you or will you not? Drummond, not only will I not, but I'm going to put an end to the whole affair now. Once and for all. Hello? Hello? This is Colonel Nielsen. Put me through to Scotland Yard. Ah, uh, will you please listen? Sussex. Hollyhocks. Peace and quiet. <laughs> Lola! Lola! I want two capable men sent immediately to the residence of Prince Ahmed in Rodney Square. Their orders will be to keep Captain Hugh Drummond, a man with a mad glint in both eyes, out of the premises. And if necessary, to arrest him and lock him up. That's all. Finish the phone, Inspector? Drummond, I warn you. If you annoy Prince Ackman again tonight, you'll be arrested. Go to bed and stop bothering people. Good night. See you later. Ah. Darling, you'll never leave me again, will you? Never, my love, never. And I'll be right back, too. Aren't you tired yet? Well, I could do with a wink or two. Oh, you sweet little mousy mousy, you. here and keep the motor running. Yes, sir. But for heaven's sake, be careful. The last time I heard of him, he was in Africa shooting lions. Every time that blighter comes to town, there's always trouble. You're right. If you ask me, Elf, I don't think that is going to turn up tonight at all. Well, you never know, you know. He's a slippery fella. You've got to be on the watch. Orders is orders.
I can't seem to remember what happened. My husband, did he reach you? Yes, he was here. Oh, I am so glad. The very thought of that ship coming into port without the authorities knowing. I've never seen him so worried. Then your husband told you what was in the radiogram? Yes, but no one else, of course. Then in all of London, there is no one who knows but just you and us here? And Mr. Field, of course. And Mr. Field, of course. Mrs. Field? Dr. Southern is going to give you a sleeping draught. Oh, but I you don't... need rest. Take it and trust me. Oh. I'm so weak. Field. Mrs. Field. Brandy powder. Yes, sir. Quick, quick. Mrs. Field. Brandy, sir. Mrs. Field. This is very important. Can you understand me? I am Captain Drummond, a friend of Lola's. Do you know the meaning of this radiogram? Yes, sir. I know. I know. It's... It's... Oh, Mrs. Field, try, try and answer, please. I... It... It's... Uh... Uh, Mrs. Field. <laughs> Splendid. I was afraid for the moment we were going to find out what it was all about. Watch her, Parker. I'll be back. Yes, sir. I tell you, he wants to see me. I have an appointment. You can't, sir. He's a thief. And he won't see anyone, sir. Oh, I've got to see him. Mm. What's going on? Is that you, Watkins? Yes, sir. Colonel Nielsen, wake up. Oh, you. You must come quickly. I've got the aunt downstairs. She's been drugged. Aunt? What aunt? Whose aunt? Great heavens, where do you dig up all these people? Oh, I can't stop the talk now. Jump into this and come oh, down. I Hang you, Drummond, I swear it. That's quite all right. From tonight on, I shan't be happy till I see your worthless body swinging from the gallows. Splendid, but come quickly. And I'm going to spring the trap myself, personally. Mrs. Field. Mrs. Field! Mrs. Field, Parker! Oh, Mrs. Field. I... Don't tell me. I know. The aunt's gone, too. Isn't that so? Drummond, you're a blithering, blasted young fool. You're a menace to every blithering, blasted man, woman, and child in England. In every way you try to drive me insane tonight, and by the Lord Harry, I... If this keeps up, we'll have to get some more brandy. Thank you. Give me your phone. Thank you. Hello? 
Hello, this is Colonel Nielsen. Give me Scotland Yard. It's a habit. If you'd stuck to those stinking little, what were you going to raise? Hollyhocks. Hollyhocks? I... Hello, this is Colonel Nielsen speaking. Send two men, better make it six, to my flat. I want them to take up a man and lock him in a cell. No, in a dungeon. All right, I'll keep him under lock and key till you get here. Uh, you're taking my telephone to bed. Oh, no. That'll stop you, Prowling. And you'll stay there till the police come. Where do you get all this rope? I see. Well, wait till I get a knife. Mousy, mousy. I can't see you, my darling, but I'll find you. Now, who in the world could that be? Began to be afraid you'd forgotten me. Algy, where's the translation? Did you get it? Well, I'll tell you about that, Hugh. The reason I haven't done anything about that, there's been something else on my mind all evening. Oh, I haven't forgotten, Algy. And I swear that nothing but a matter of the gravest importance would bring me to you on such a night. But that radiogram may mean life or death. Algy, we've got to know. Well, I suppose Gwen and I are still young. Plenty years ahead of us, eh? Now, good fellow. Now get to work and bring me a translation to Prince Ahmed's house in Rodney Square in half an hour. Remember, Ahmed's house, half an hour. 30 minutes, eh? How is she now? She'll be all right, she's coming too. Uh, leave her alone, please. Please. Uncle. Your uncle is dead. Dead? Then you killed him. <laughs> we'll discuss that at another time. Oh. And my aunt, where is she? Your aunt is safe, so far. What do you mean? Miss Field, I shan't try to mislead you any longer. It is impossible to exaggerate the danger of your present position, yours and your aunt's. It may sound fantastic to you, but really, your lives depend on my getting possession of the radiogram which your uncle received on the Bombay girl. Radiogram? But I haven't got it. What did you do with it, Miss Field? Then allow me to guess. You gave it to Captain Drummond. No. No, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't. Let me go. I'll get it for you. I promise you I'll get no, it for no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> you needn't bother. Charming tab, Captain Drummond. Very romantic. We'll get it from him ourselves. Sing! Highness, take three men, armed, and deliver for me a personal invitation to... And remember, Sing, I'm at home to no one but Captain Bulldog Drummond. And let me remind you, my dear, that not only your aunt's life, not only your own, but also Captain Drummond's, depends entirely upon the niceness of your behavior. His Highness is expecting you, sir. Oh. Still, 
more or less open house tonight, isn't it? Good evening, everybody. Captain Drummond, no one has ever been more welcome. Well, there seems to be a certain charm about this lovely old mausoleum. Ah, Miss Field, fancy finding you here. What do you want, Captain Drummond? Oh, you, of course. Please go and forget me. Forget you? I'm afraid that's impossible. You'd better come with me. Neither of you leaves this house tonight. <laughs> now, listen, my good-natured friend, perhaps we can reach some agreement. If you'll stop kidnapping people from my house, I'll promise to stop breaking into yours. Otherwise, this sort of thing might keep up all night. Captain Drummond, I gave you fair warning to keep out of this. I'm now giving you another chance. Turn the radiogram over to me. Otherwise... Uh... Yes? Oh, please, please, Captain Drummond, give it to him. Uh, you were saying... Otherwise, I shall be compelled to use force. Uh -uh. Now, hear me, my melodramatic oriental. I'll give you nothing. And this radiogram now becomes a document that Scotland Yard must see. And I'll further trouble you to keep your hands in front of you as I depart. Miss Field, I'll call you later. Oh, -ho, Lady Macbeth, I believe. Sing. How, son? Uh, out of the way or I'll shoot. Relieve Captain Drummond of his gun. It's not loaded. And now, what have you to say, Captain Drummond? As awkward a situation, Your Highness, as any I can remember. Empty-handed, entirely surrounded by villains, armed to the teeth and thirsting for my blood. May I have a cigarette? You will notice that, uh, in spite of my danger, I still remain calm and collected, keen and alert for the next move. What will it be? The radiogram, please. You know, this means about half a million pounds to me. Ah, the old saying, Your Highness, easy come, easy go. Captain Drummond, you have ignored warning after warning. You have interfered in the most reckless and foolhardy fashion. When you gamble, Captain Drummond, you must also count on losing. See? You're lying. Give it to me, I tell you. Drummond, I swear I'll kill you. What's all the row about? Rather a close shave, Your Highness. doing all this here? Matter of fact, officer, I am. Captain Drummond. <laughs> yes. Now, if you'll allow me to explain... That's all right, Your Highness. We'll handle him for you. Now then, Captain Drummond, uh, you've got to come along with us. Orders is orders. Officer, you're, you're perfectly right. Orders is orders. Uh, but I tell you, it's unnecessary. <laughs> Uh, apparently, there's been some silly mistake. Captain Drummond is my guest. I want him to remain here. <laughs> generous. Always generous to a fault. But no, Your Highness, I am guilty. I am ready to pay my debt to society. That's very handsome of you trying to save him like that, sir. Very handsome. Now then, Captain Drummond, you come along with us. Uh, Your Highness, this is probably your most embarrassing moment. Good night, Your Highness. The 
You fools! You bungled everything! Get out! You understand, Captain? We don't want to arrest you. But you're behaving like a jack-in-the-box. You can't do this sort of thing. Orders is orders. All right, officer. I'll go home. All I need is peace and quiet. Carry on, old man. Right out, Governor. Algy! Here, here. Where are you going? Here, none of that stuff now. But that's Algy. Friend of mine. There's danger for him if he goes into that house. Great danger, I tell now, you. Now, you're having nightmares, sir. Why, His Highness is one of the nicest, kindest gentlemen whatever I saw. He wouldn't harm a fly. All right, officer. I'll go. Good night. Good night, sir. And pleasant dreams. Thank you. And sleep well. Thank you, sir. The same to you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good evening. Oh, is Captain Drummond here? Are you a friend of Captain Drummond? More like his right hand, I'd say. Come right in, sir. You're indeed welcome. Only stay but a moment, though. Wait here. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm a friend of Captain Drummond. Well, shall we sit down? What did you want to see Captain Drummond about? Fact is, I handled a little matter for him tonight. Seemed to be a bit too much for him by himself. But I decoded it. Oh, a radiogram, wasn't it? I said a radiogram and code. Probably no more than ten men in London could have figured it out. Well, no more than a thousand, anyway. And you have this translation with you? Oh, yes. It would be pretty stupid of me to translate it and then forget to bring it. Give it to me. But it's for Drummond. Give it to me, you fool. Give it to me. Hello. Just a moment, please. It's Colonel Nielsen. Stay where you are. Hello. Yes, Colonel Nielsen. I had him locked in his room, but he got out through the window. Yes, Colonel. I understand perfectly. <laughs> uh, I'll do just as you say. Mind you, there's nothing actually wrong with Drummond. He's a bit balmy, that's all. He's the sort of chap who might be lurking in the shrubbery under your window at this moment. Yes, Colonel. I understand. I thought I'd give you the tip. Good night. Good night. Give it to me! I'm afraid it's too late. I doubt if you could even get it with a stomach pump. Sing, Hassan! Yes, Highness. Lock him in the cellar and hurry back. Here, here, boys. I'll report this case. Where's the girl? Upstairs, the room next to her arm. Good. Parker. Yes, sir. Take Mrs. Beale to a hotel and make it a good, strong one. Then come back here and wait for me. Yes, sir. Now, Parker will tell you what to do. Follow his instructions. Turn off the lights. Unlock those windows. I have an idea there's going to be good hunting here soon. Do you like hollyhocks? Why, yes, I love them. Why? Nothing. That's all I wanted to know. On your way, quick.
Well, speak bluntly. I'm quite willing to admit that I'm without experience in violence like this. I'm not a criminal by choice or habit. But you must believe me when I tell you that I'm prepared to go to any length to get possession of that radiogram, even to killing you if you make it necessary. My dear fellow, you are without a doubt one of the most engaging blackguards I have ever encountered. I know, of course, that you place no value on your own life. Oh, no, no, no. On the contrary, I love my life, as a mother loves her child. At four o'clock, I shall leave to watch the Bombay girl unload its cargo. So you have 20 minutes in which to tell me what you've done with that radiogram. 20 minutes, Drummond. No more and no less. Remember, Drummond, 20 minutes, no more and no less. You said that. You're repeating yourself. Quick, Al. What about the translation of that message? Oop. That's it. What do you mean? I ate it. Ate it? You know, like a spy, chewed it up and ate it. Algy, that was only a copy. They don't care about a copy. I know that now. I don't suppose you'd have a bit of bicarbonate of soda about you, would you? No, no, quick now, Algy, tell me. What did it say? It was to Paul Field, SS Bombay girl, en route Port Said to London. Yes, yes. Please advise Prince Ahmed that Rogers died of colic. Of colic? Sort of a children's stomach ache. Usually comes from eating green apples. Oh! Oh, Algy, Algy, you've missed it. There was no signature. Port Said, en route to Port Said. That's where Lola said they put the sick sailor ashore. Yes, and he was the one who died. Oh, but not of colic. No, that, that wouldn't account for murder, for kidnapping. Why, Christopher, Algy, we've got to get out of this. It'd be pretty nice if you cleared up the whole matter so you could get home to bed, don't you think? Well, Algy, we must get out of here. Only we could get someone to open that door. That's only a house phone, old boy. You can't get the police that way. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is this a ghost? <laughs> Greetings. How's the blood pressure? Well. <laughs> Have you decided? Well, how much time have we? You have 11 minutes to decide. Then hear me, my foul friend. We are now going to attack. I promise you a word of honor that in 10 minutes, no more, no less, we are coming up there to nail your whole ruddy plan to the wall. 10 minutes, no more, no less. What plan is that? I don't know, but think of it, Algy. From a locked room, practically a dungeon, to complete mastery of the situation in 10 minutes, Algy, if we can do that, we'll be superb. You'll be a bit surprised, too, I guess. I could admire that young man under other circumstances. He's a fool. On the contrary, he is too clever. <laughs> Hello. The attack has started, my pompous peacock, and Mrs. Field is gone. Nine more minutes. I say now, Hugh, you don't want to get a Johnny like that worked up, you know. That's just what we do want, Algy. I know of no better way of working up than by, by ringing bells. You understand, Drummond? You're only making more unhappiness for yourself. He's right. The old woman has gone. Gone? It's impossible. Why, he's locked up. Did you look in the girl's room? No. Sing. Go search the girl's room, quickly. What do you want? You were speaking of Miss Field, weren't you? 
Well, she's gone too. Eight more minutes, my gaudy aristocrat. No more, no less. <laughs> but he can't. He can't. He's locked in the room without windows. Highness, the girl is gone too. But how? It's impossible, I tell Quite a musician, ain't he? Reminds me of my son Angus. He's taking lessons on the bagpipes. No. Anything yet? Your answer. Algy, we have company. Now walk straight ahead, sir. Both of you. You know, Hugh, barring none, this is probably the dullest wedding night a man ever spent. So, Captain Drummond, you were going to have me by four o'clock. Well, roughly, yes, that was my idea. Uh, and what have you to say now? It isn't four o'clock yet. Well, I must admit that I've rarely had the pleasure of knowing so courageous a fighter. It's unfortunate that uh, victory is a joy that cannot be divided. Unfortunate, too, that only one of us will live to celebrate it. You understand, of course, that uh, a translation of your radiogram is already on its way to Scotland Yard? And let me inform you, sir, that whatever happens now, it's too late to stop me. A half hour ago, my ship left quarantine with a clean slate. Quarantine. And waiting at the dock are trucks and men. In a half hour, her cargo will be ashore. I'll have my half million pounds in gold, and then farewell to England. I've got it, Algy. By Christopher, I've got it at last. Come, quick. Stop her on fire. Sorry, this time I can't stop. Drummond, this is your last chance. Give me that radiogram at once, or I'll kill you. Your Highness, this is not your lucky night. Here, 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 now. Who's doing all this here? Who's shooting who? Captain Drummond. Strike me pink. How did you get in here? I thought I told you to stay out of here. You're right, officer. And I was trying to leave, but His Highness insists that I stay. Oh, that's very handsome of you, sir. As I said before, that's very handsome indeed. Your heart's in place, but orders is orders. Now then, Captain Drummond, you've got to come along with us. You see, Your Highness, I must tear myself away. 
You know, orders is orders. Come on, Algy, work to do. Good night, Your Highness. He's speaking. I'm fucking with him, sir. I'm not. Yes, sir. Yes, I... Colonel Nielsen. Colonel Nielsen. Huh? What the? What's going on? What is you there? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, but I must see you. What, what are you doing here? I'm Lola Field, and I've come on behalf of Captain Drummond. What, another lunatic? What, kid? Show the young lady out. No, no, no. You must listen to me. Captain Drummond's in danger. They may kill him. Good. The sooner the better. Oh, but you don't understand. They've already killed my uncle, and they may kill him, too. Oh, who's killed whose uncle? Now, wait a bit. Start at the beginning and tell me all about it. Well, it's... Watkins! Don't go. Business, but where are we going? To the docks to stop the Bombay girl from unloading her cargo. Now, gee, we've got to find that cook. Search this room thoroughly. Consider yourself under arrest. Oh, just one moment, Colonel. This radiogram was received by Paul Field, captain of this ship. It is in code and concerns the mysterious death of a sailor. You're right, Hugh. That word was wrong. The sailor didn't die of colic. Of course he didn't. Colonel, this is the ship's private code book. The last word in that radiogram is cholera. Cholera! And you were trying to smuggle infected cargo ashore to risk starting a horrible plague a plague that might have meant the deaths of thousands. Every penny I had in the world was invested in those furs. It is unfortunate that they turned out to be diseased. However, gentlemen, I fought. 
precisely as I would fight again under the same circumstances. But as I said to Captain Drummond, when a man gambles, he must be prepared to lose. Gentlemen, I have lost. Darling, I'm back again. Mousie, darling, where have you been all night? Where haven't I been, you mean? <laughs> oh, what's the matter, baby? Are you sick? Well, I could do with a bit of bicarbonate of soda. Hello, what's new? Algy, my dear fellow, I have pleasure in informing you that a marriage has been arranged and will take place the moment you and Gwen arrive here to witness the ceremony. But, yo, I've got to get to bed and get a little sleep. Sleep? Who ever heard of such a thing? Why, it's daylight. No, 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 Algy. Breakfast is waiting and Lola is starving. Aren't you, darling? Mm. Come over at once. All right, we'll be over. That was Hugh Drummond wants us to come over and witness his marriage. His marriage? To whom? Some girl he met in the fog last night. I never did catch her name. The way it's beginning to look to me, we might as well have never been married. Well, cheer up, my pet. Who knows, we may be very happy in our quiet platonic ways. Hollyhock, you asked me last night if I liked them. And you said yes. So I decided to marry you. Thanks to Hollyhock. Oh, darling, just think of it. Peace and quiet, a babbling brook, a few hollyhocks bright against the garden wall. 